How you doing? And thanks for tuning in to Wicked Warnings, your number one source for safety strobe lighting and equipment for cars, vans, buses, bicycles, tricycles, and very awesome, low profile, 11 foot, stake body, F450 Super Duty pickup trucks, like what you're looking at here. It's a stake body, but notice it's a low profile. This does service the city of Chicago. Some of them have some pretty tight garages, so this particular truck needs to have a lower profile. And I'm going to warn you right now, this is an in-depth video because this is a particularly large build and it's got a lot of detail. Also, I'll show you something really cool. We finally got our wrap done on the office walls. Very cool, huh? All right. Back to the truck. What are we looking at in the front right there? Right in the front of the grill there? We're looking at our Empower 3-inch Amber White. Now, we mounted those on the bezel around the factory tow hooks on the front bumper there, vertically, as well as horizontally on the very top of the grill. Now, on the top of the grill, we did drill a hole, but those are VHB quick mount lights, so only one hole is needed. Same thing down by the tow hook, drill a small hole in the bezel. That's just a simple X pattern achieved by synchronizing those lights to flash two by two. It's nothing more than an alternating light pattern with two lights alternating at a time. And the positioning makes it do that. That's the very first pattern that is in the Empower list. And two of those lights are set on alternate to make them flash as you see there. Now, because this is a cabin chassis, almost all of them come with auxiliary switches. We ran those lights to the auxiliary switches in the passenger fender area by extending them all with our 22-5 power control cable. As we come around the side of the truck here, you'll notice the thin X that's mounted in the front badge. We do that on a lot of our Super Duty cabs. It's a very good spot. And we elected to do a very simple flash pattern all around this truck because it actually installs and removes some of the barricades when they're doing lane closures in the city. So I was told, and they'll be working around it quite often at night. We didn't want anything to be overly aggressive with the pattern where the men were working. So everything around the back and the sides is a little tame, but very effective. We did a solid amber white double flash on the badges, and around the stake body, we did the same double flash amber white, but we did an alternating split pattern. Something that was very cool we got to install on this truck is the Phoenix torch light. Now that's a pole light, 20,000 lumens, and it's adjustable, I believe, from 40 to 70 inches. It mounts on brackets, as you see, and you can spin that head around if you want to turn it backwards. We left it like this, so if they needed some forward lighting, they could just kick it on. But we can raise that light by loosening that collar right here on the bottom, right here. And you can raise this light, all of that lower stick that you see there, you raise it that much, which I believe is 40 inches, uh, or I'm going to have to get a spec and post that. It has a nice coiled cord on the bottom, and uh, this light is particularly cool. Now, you might notice below that, if I stop moving the camera, right there in those belly boxes, we have our 22-inch task LED. We ran them vertically, or, uh, horizontally, right towards the front of the box. We mounted them to the top of that box with our VHB tape and our primer. We made sure to clean the box and the task LED very well and to heat it gently with a heat gun before we applied it. it also used that primer and we stuck it straight to the top there. Now, as you can see there, it provides a nice amount of light inside those boxes and I'm not playing any games. The shop lights are on right now. So that 22 inch task light is very good for inside your toolboxes if you have this kind of a need with toolbox lighting. We did run those task lights right to an auxiliary switch real simply so you can turn on all four because there are two boxes on each side of this truck and I was, I was told they have the boxes open quite often when they're working and uh, so this is kind of how the truck will be used with the lights on and the doors open most of the time. Moving around the back, we've got two more of our Thinex with 90 degree brackets mounted right there underneath the stake body. We tucked them back about a three quarters of an inch. So that way, if we have any loading or unloading of this truck with a forklift, hopefully they remain damage free. They are mounted on our 90 degree bracket. So they're easy to replace if one should have an unfortunate accident. Alrighty, and speaking of accidents, we wanna prevent as many as we can. Being that this truck has ladders that fold down right here on the back of each corner to access the bed, and those ladders are used during work hours, which are at night, 
We wanted to make sure the steps were not only illuminated, but the ground underneath them was as well. So we mounted up under the bed one of our SS3 Sport lights by Diode Dynamics. They're sold in a pair, and that's great because this truck has a ladder on each side. So we put one light on each ladder, mounted up in the framework of the truck to shine down on a 45 across the rungs of the ladder where you put your feet and also on the ground below. And here's the shot you're all waiting for. This is what it's going to look like at night. You can absolutely see the ladder. You can see the ground all around the ladder. So hopefully they'll have no accidents around these ladders when they're working at night. And these lights will provide them all the work light that they need to access the items in and out of the bed. Here's a no filter side shot of what those belly boxes look like. You can see as I pan out here, I am in a dark shop. But that's the amount of light that two of a 22 inch task LEDs are gonna get you right there in some pretty large toolboxes. I believe these are 48 inch. Looks like about a 96 inch total box on here right now. So as I said, everything on this truck is ran off the auxiliary switches. It's not that elaborate of a system. Switch one is our flashing for all of our warning lighting. Switch two is our belly box lights for our toolboxes. Switch three is our steps for the rear steps. And switch four is our torch light for the torch light, which I'm gonna show you some exterior shots. We're gonna uh, do a whole nother video specifically about that torch light. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get it outside and show you what it looks like outside in the dark, show you how much light that 20,000 lumens really gets you. Okay, so at this point I've, I've keyed everything off and I'm just gonna kind of show you the mounts real quick. So pardon the camera, I'm walking it around as I'm uh, showing it to you. See, just holding it in my hands. So, but here's where we mount these M powers right here. Single drilled hole right there in the grill leads to a great mount. I love it. I do it on a lot of stuff. It's a great mount. Down here by the tow hooks, pop that bezel off. You can get behind it. You can run the wiring right up there behind the headlight. Join up with the other ones. Go to the auxiliaries. Works real well. I like that mount a lot. We'll be doing more of that. We'll work our way around here. I have a great video all about how to mount these badge lights. But that's our thin X light right there in the badge. You can see there. We'll move into the belly lights here. I've turned my flashlight on for you. We'll look underneath here. This is how we wired those. Of course, we used the VHB like I was saying. We joined them together here in the middle. We ran the harness out the back, silicone that from the back side, keep the water out of there. So that's how this is all done. Then. Here's our 90 degree mount, tucked in underneath the edge here. Ran all of our wiring, tucked up out of the way, protected everything. You can see basically the same thing down there in the corner one there. And here, this is how the ladder works. And you can see our light with the ladder. There's our light. That's a diode sport SS3 mounted right there seems to do a great job for that ladder and because it's mounted above the frame rail you cannot hit it with the ladder when you put the ladder away we did extensive testing and one of our employees actually took a ladder to the head accidentally when he was testing so send a shout out to poor brian and uh and we'll get him to post a picture of the little circular indents that are on his forehead from testing that <laughs> uh it turned out good uh, I hate to laugh, but it's funny. A small accident is funny because uh, nobody was seriously hurt at all. He just bumped his head and it left a little circular mark. So that's how we mounted all that stuff there. Very cool. Alrighty, thanks again for watching on this video. I'm gonna tie another video to it about the torch light and how we take that thing outside. I'm gonna go over how I mounted that here real quick for you too. It's kind of easy, stainless nut and bolt right to the body of the bed. Uh, we're going to have to clean up my Loctite a little bit right there. Uh, I wanted to make sure that these did not go anywhere, so we blue loctite that. So, that's it. That's how that's mounted right there. We controlled it all with our auxiliary switches. Threw a little label on those. Hard to see it here, but there you go. Thanks again for watching Wicked Warnings. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you on the next one. All right, everyone, I'm going to demonstrate how easy this light is to put up and I'll show you. I'll spin it around a little bit. I'm going to show you kind of what it's like here out in the dark parking lot over there. I am under street light. I apologize. Um, this is about as dark as I can get it here in our parking lot. But uh, I'm going to show you real quick what this light does on film so you can kind of see how it's going to react and how much light it's throwing over 
that away. I'm actually going to see if I can zoom into 1.0. No, I'm going to go back out here. There we go. All right, guys, let me show you. I hope that shows you some, but what I'm gonna do is take you off the tripod right now, and I'm gonna take you on a walk. I'm gonna put you on one X, and I'm gonna show you. This is currently pointed to the back of the truck, which is kinda of how I think they're gonna use it, but you can see that spillover. It's lighting the whole parking lot up. Uh, it's not even angled down. I could angle it down, but uh, you can see easily what it's doing here. And uh, let me kinda of walk around the back of the truck here and show you. Obviously quite a bit of light there. Not really a good picture to show of anything uh, But inside the light here you can see when I See the truck is pretty illuminated in there for sure. So I'll come back around this side Try to get you a top-down view from I'll climb up in the truck here And we're going up and we'll Zoom out a little and of course this is all angleable you can make that down a little closer. You can tweak it and you can see how far it's lighting up all the way past the truck, way out in the parking lot there. So that's the Phoenix Torchlight. That's how we put it on this steak body. Hope you like this video. Thanks for watching.